Good morning. Good morning. August special offering will benefit the Kutztown Campus Ministry. Mark your calendar. Winding down Cookies at the Cross, today will be the last Cookies at the Cross, but next Sunday, September 1st, instead of cookies, we will be having Sunday Sunday. Ice cream and all the toppings will be served. The following Sunday, September 8th, is Rally Day, and Men in Mission will be starting their San Burrell breakfast that same day after this service. At this time, I'm going to call on Gretchen Mertz and then Tim Hefner. Good morning. It's time for cat class again. Um, we will have orientation on September 15th at 1045. I'm inviting all the 7th and 8th graders to return and have a great time with us. Um, Bruce Roberts and I will be teaching, and we hope to have a really great year. So come on out. Next September 15th is our orientation. Our parents and our students are invited to come up to the CAC classroom, and we'll talk about what the requirements are. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. We'd like to announce that on Tuesday evening, the church council approved the mission site profile, and it is now before the Senate at this point in time for their approval. And as soon as uh, Bishop DeForest signs off on the mission site profile, we will be officially in the call process to uh, find a new permanent pastor. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Pastor Fox, our supply pastor for the day. Good morning. Again, it is really a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, we are um, having a praise service again this morning, which if you were here a month ago, you will recall it's uh, a bit different than your traditional liturgical service. But uh, with your bulletins and your screen and uh, the wonderful musicians that are leading uh, in music, uh, we'll just glo uh, glorify and praise God in a wonderful way. I also want to say that... Um, I'm really happy to be here um, for the Sunday that the youth are talking about their experience down in New Orleans at the youth gathering. Um, I'd be happy to be here in any case, but I'm happy especially because I was here the Sunday that we commissioned them and blessed them. So I'm looking forward to seeing that I did a really good job uh, sending them off that Sunday. <laughs> And so that'll be an exciting report. So with that, please stand and share with me uh, reading Psalm 145 responsively. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall fall to earth to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom, and tell of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. 
and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We greet one another with the sign of Christ's peace. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson is from the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the, bis- the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We hope that these young people uh, moved a little closer to seeing themselves as ambassadors, uh, not in chains, as Paul was when he wrote this lesson, but ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ and the church. And uh, if I were to suggest passages that might help see them through uh, the years of their um, high school, college years, if they go to college and beyond young adulthood. This might be one uh, where Paul is uh, using the image of a soldier, uh, but talking about the spiritual gifts that really see us through. So um, who is talking today? Do we have more than one person or? Okay. Would you like to use a, would you like to speak? Okay. Everybody knows you but me. Okay, okay, great. Good morning. I am Carol Cox, and I am Katie's mom, is how most people know me. But anyway, this is Katie. Um, along with Katie and I, Sean Bessie went as the other chaperone. Um, Ella Williams went, and my, other, my son Tommy also went. Um, This morning, we're just giving a very brief overview of what we did at the youth gathering. We were there July 15th through July 20th. Um, But Sunday, September 29th at 9.45 for Coffee and Conversation, we are going to do a full presentation, I guess you'd call it, or whatever you want to call it. Um, All of a sudden, everybody was looking behind me. (laughs) Um, presentation of everything we did um, kind of in more detail um, because we knew we, Sean and I talked about it and we said there's too much to talk about to do it just during a church service so we want everyone to kind of get the full idea of what we did while we were down there. So we left here very early Monday morning and headed down to New Orleans. Um, We got down there, we did a little sightseeing um, the first night and the first, and then into Tuesday, and Tuesday morning, and then the youth gathering actually started Tuesday night with a mass, what they call the mass gathering in the super, not the Superdome. We were in the Smoothie King arena. Um, how many people were there? Sixteen thousand. So it's a little different than here, um, <laughs> just a little, um, and it's all. Um, praise and worship music, there was a band, there were concerts during those, each evening during those mass gatherings. And then we had three days of, each day you had a different activity you would do. So the fir- our Wednesday was our interactive learning day. Tell us about our interactive learning day. So on your interactive learning day, you go into the convention center and it's really big and there's just a lot of different things you can do. Like there's an area that had like bounce houses and pickleball, spike ball, ping pong, all just like different things. And then there was also an area where, what do you call it? Like a CW uh, yeah, thing? Uh, like a interact, like you kind of like did a simulator and like what it's like to be a refugee and like we got like to pick different 
things from a list, and then we had to like, oh, this happened, so you lost all your items. And then the, that was Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday was our accompaniment day, thank you. It's, which is basically a day of service and you are assigned we did, when we signed, registered for the youth gathering, we did sign up that we wanted to go out into the community versus staying at the um, convention center and doing something there. Um, but that day, I, I, for myself, that was definitely my favorite day. I don't know about Katie, if that, but do you want to tell them what we did for our service day? We recycled paint. So it's, what was it called? Project Green. Project, Project Green. And they had a whole bunch of different areas with different color paints that they had gotten from the community. And then you had to open them and mix them. And some of them were very disgusting. And they smelled really bad. Yeah, so this Project Green, they, it's, they help people know, like, learn about recycling. So, like, the funds that they raise through selling the recycled paint. And it's actually, they also do other building products as well. She, the lady that was talking to us basically said it's, think of it as a goodwill for um, building supplies. But they, so they mix these paints and um, they sell a gallon of paint then for $10 and five gallons, I think, for 45 So it's a way that they can, you know, re people can bring their old paint, get some new use, and so I'm sure we will, again, on that September 29th, go into lots of detail and tell you the grossness of mixing paint. Um, the third day, what was the third, what was the last day? Oh, the Senate day. That day, it was, in the past, was just with your Senate this year, being the numbers were a little smaller. They, it was Senate and slash region day, so we were with our Senate as well into up into New Jersey and kind of New England. Um, we started the day off, well, actually, I'll let you tell. So we started the day and we did a scavenger hunt through the French Quarter, so we, it's in this app called Juice, Goose Chase, and you just have to do all the things, like it was like take a picture of this and then you had to submit it throughout the entire French Quarter, and then we went to a church service with just like our synod and region, and it was a lot, 800. Okay. There were 800 people, so. And it was like, it was kind of like a praise service would be here. Yeah. So it was a lot more like, it was like the liturgy was the same as here. <laughs> and then our last Saturday, then Saturday morning, we went right to the Smoothie King Center for our final worship service, which the other, th each night you went to the Smoothie King Center for a, like everyone was there for the mass gathering. There was, like I said, a concert and things like that. Saturday morning was a little different. That morning it was a worship service. Again, it still had the praise band, it, um, but it was run with more of the, would you agree, like the liturgy, like similar to what we have here. Um, and then they announced where we're going in 2027. 20, where are we going in 2027? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis, Minnesota. So for a couple of you sitting back there, think ahead for three years, and Minneapolis, Minnesota is where we're headed in three years. So please come out on September 29th and hear kind of an, from the rest of us some with tomorrow is our... All of us in our group are Fleetwood kids, so Tommy had to work today and Ella had something else going on before the start of school, so thank you. Thank you. Please rise. Alleluia, <clears throat> alleluia, shall we go you have the words of eternal life Alleluia The Holy Gospel according to St. John the 6th chapter Jesus said those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, 
So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So I see at least two children. While they're coming forward, I have a question about the youth gathering. I wonder if any of those, how many did you say were there? 16,000 youth and, and adults. Yeah. Well, anyway, I wonder if any of them are encouraged to become pastors because of this experience. And if not, uh, we should start uh, thinking about that because, as we all know, the church needs pastors. Thank you, Martin. Hi. I know who you are now. You're Nora, right? Can you say your name in the... Nora. Nora, yeah. And you're George, right? Can you say your name? You want your sister to say... Who's your brother? George. Okay. Sooner or later, you're going to have to speak for yourself. Let's see, I guess I'll bring the little stool over and I'll put this back here. Sorry about that. So how's your, how's your summer? Is your summer over? Are you, back, are you in school now? Yeah, when did school start? Are all the kids in school now in Fleetwood? Wednesday. Oh, it's sad to me that school starts so soon, because to me it's still summer, but, you know, we don't have much control. So I brought something for you today. Now, I'm not going to send you back with these, because they might be a little dirty, but I hope when you leave today you'll take one. This is a little jade plant. It's a plant. Oh, my goodness. I wanted to show you a picture, so just hold just a second. This is a praise service, so we can do anything, right? <laughs> Sing another song. <laughs> I wanted to show you a picture, and I left my phone in my purse, so I had to go get my purse. Um, Could you hold this to me, George? Thank you. You want to say something while you're holding it? Sure. So, these tiny little cuttings. Now, what did I do? You went real big. pretty big, isn't it? That's bigger than the two of you put together. And that big plant came from this tiny little cutting. So, can 
and I have the mic with you. Thank you. So when you get home today, I'll, since you're only two here, you could have two of them. If you want to put that in a bigger pot, it'll get bigger, and then it'll get even bigger. And you'll have, as long as you know you want it to keep growing, you might have to get bigger pots all the time. But it's a beautiful plant, as you can see from my picture again. And I have to tell you, that it likes sun, but it doesn't like the hot afternoon sun. So don't leave it out in the sun all day, because it'll burn up. But it does like some sun, and it likes to be in the house during the winter. So you can't put it in such a big pot, you can't move it back in, or it'll freeze. So those are just some tips as to how to keep this little jade plant alive. And they're beautiful as they grow. Their leaves always look shiny and healthy. And uh, it takes good soil, and it needs to be watered once in a while, but not a lot, to keep it alive. So what keeps you alive? What do you have to do? Eat. Eat. Yes. And don't we just all hate eating? <laughs> no. You should see the look on Nora's face. She knows we don't. You like eating, right? You're getting there. <laughs> Maybe George, not so much. Some things, but you know, this, we grow into loving eating. And uh, anybody out there not like to eat? Raise your hand. <laughs> Anybody out there thinking about what they're going to be eating next today when church is over? <laughs> I think that's often on our minds, <laughs> what our next meal is. Anything besides eating that keeps you going? Anything else you have? Water. Water, that's really important, just like our little plants need. But again, don't water them too much, just a little drop or two every other day or so. And anything else besides food and water? Something else you probably don't enjoy quite as much yet, but again, it kind of grows on you. Sleeping, yeah, the older you get, the more you like to sleep, and you need to sleep. What about your doctor's visits? Does that help you get, keep going? Yes even though you probably don't enjoy that too much either. So there's a lot of things we do to keep going. What about what's inside of us, besides our heart and lung, but our feelings and our thoughts? What helps those grow? Got any ideas there? What helps you be kind or be loving or think through? Uh, what's the right or wrong thing to do? Anything you can do to, to help grow in those ways? That's a tough one. You can start planning to go to the youth gathering in four years or three years. With the, she won't be old enough yet. Though. No, well, ten years. Ten years you can go. <laughs> you, I know one thing that you're doing is getting to church pretty regularly. That helps you grow in your heart, in your mind, and be loving and kind and smart to make good decisions. And if you listen to your parents and grandparents, they give you good advice about that too, right? You'd rather eat, wouldn't you? <laughs> and one, one other, a couple other things. Praying helps with that. You pray sometimes with your family? Yeah. And what about Jesus? Do you think about Jesus? Now you're getting bread when you come up for communion. And do you remember what I say? Jesus loves you. That's why he's, the bread is from Jesus. I'm just helping Jesus out when I give you the bread that Jesus loves you. And when you think about that, then you become more loving too. And that's why we have that bread every Sunday, because we need, we need every little bit we can to be more loving. There's a lot of things that keep us from being as loving as Jesus wants us to be.
Okay? So I look forward to seeing you in a little bit up here at the communion rail. And please, I'm going to put these in the back. You can take as many as you want, little cuttings. And I'd love to see if they grow for you. Well, they will if you take good care of them. Jade plants. Okay, thank you. We don't fail to feed our bodies. Almost, you know, we're pretty faithful to feed our bodies. In fact, it, here in this country, uh, in this culture that we are all a part of in this country, it's almost become more that we um, live to eat rather than eat to live because we have plenty to eat. And a lot of us, in fact, try hard not to eat so much. So uh, we've almost moved into this category of living to eat. It's a recreation and it's an activity. And it's a good thing, a good thing that we gather to eat. There are uh, times that I enjoy eating more than other times. How about you? I love this time of eating all the fresh fruits and vegetables. And as uh, soon as uh, we moved past Harvest Home, I don't know if you recognize Harvest Home, that used to be a thing in the church where people would bring in their produce, all the zucchini that they didn't know what to do with would end up at the altar for Harvest Home. And we begin to look forward to the turkey at Thanksgiving. And then how about the Christmas cookies? I know you have cookies at the cross, but there's something about those Christmas cookies uh, even the most disciplined person kind of uh, crumbles in, <laughs> with the cookies, along with the cookies. They're so tempting. And how many of you have pork and sauerkraut on New Year's Day? That's one of my favorites I look forward to. And then we soon move into the Easter ham. And what's Memorial Day without a hot dog? So though uh, we eat all the time, there are those peak times that we really enjoy eating. And maybe there's a day of the week that uh, you enjoy more than other days. It might be your day off. It might be after you've uh, dieted for five days and you give yourself uh, a break. Or it might be the day that all the family comes home and you all join together in a great big meal. And there might be a time of the day that you like to eat the most. Some of us enjoy breakfast the most. Some lunch and just have a little soup at the end of the day or ice cream, and some look forward to a big meal at the end of the day. There are times of the year and days of the week and meals during the day that mean the most to us. And then there is our meal that we share on Sunday, a meal that has grown more important to me through the years, especially as I think about um, what Martin Luther taught about this meal. I didn't grow up Lutheran, so this was a new teaching that I continue to meditate on, that Jesus is really present here when we come to this communion meal. Jesus knew the importance of food. He knew that food was important, that people needed to be fed physically before they could really ingest spiritual food to its full uh, meaning. People that are hungry, and there are a lot of people out there that are hungry. And I applaud any ministries that you have to help alleviate that hunger. But when they're hungry, it's not really a good time to say to them, God loves you, uh, 
even though you go away hungry. You know, first we kind of have to satisfy their bodies. And we see this in Jesus' ministries. In fact, this stretch through August, I don't know if you, some of you come every Sunday, I, or at least I've seen you here when I'm here every Sunday. Uh, you may recall, you may feel like August has been a little repetitive as far as the teaching of Christ saying we could sum it up, I am the bread of life. It's in uh, sections of this passage for five, six weeks. It began uh, the Sunday of the feeding of the thousands when the little boy offered his bread and fish. And that was the last day I was here. And then week after week, it's a variation of that theme where Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. But he is feeding people at the same time. He is saying, uh, yes, feed your bodies, but even more importantly, feed your souls. Feed those things that create good feelings inside of yourself. Kindness and generosity and forgiveness and faith. And the ways that uh, feed your mind to make good decisions and uh, attempt not to ever hurt yourself or others. Jesus is constantly drawing attention to the importance of spiritual food. And so, among all the times of the year or the days of the week or the meals that might stand out as your favorites, let this always be our very favorite. Because as hard as we try, as nutritious as our meals may be, as many supplements as we may take, as many doctor visits as we may have, you know as well as I do that, uh, you know, we peak at a certain time. I'm looking out at the congregation. No offense, because I'm right with you. Most of us peaked a long time ago. <laughs> And we are in the process of decline. As much as we take care of our bodies, our bodies, as Jesus says, he says they're useless in the end. In the end, our bodies are going to wear out. Our bodies are going to let us down. We are going to take our last breath. And that's when knowing that our spirits are strong, rooted, in the faith, will live on. That having fed our spirits will be ever so much more important than feeding our faces. And so, you know, this is why I keep supply preaching on Sundays. This is what uh, motivates me to continue to serve the church and to inject our Lord Jesus Christ through scripture and song and prayer and this meal because it feeds my soul which puts a spring in my step. Jesus tried to get this across in a myriad of ways. I don't think his first choice was to give of himself to have his body broken and his blood shed. I think he tried in myriad of ways to teach the importance of feeding our souls. But ultimately, this is what he needed to do. To get this point across, to get us to accept this gift and the truth of this teaching, that he is with us now always. And he will be with us to the end. Amen. Please stand.
Please join me in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene or Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord. He who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can be seated. You know, I went to a Lutheran church in, uh, not so far from Milwaukee, uh, in, um, well, I'm sorry, Minneapolis is where you're going next. I get those two confused. Anyway, it was not so far from Milwaukee. It was a Lutheran church. They did not stand for anything. I mean, it was pretty otherwise a service that we would all be comfortable in, but I guess they just decided why well, keep standing and sitting, so... It worked. God was with us. So now we come to the time of sharing joys and sorrows. And uh, one thing I wanted to ask again about your event, how was the music? Did you say anything about the music I maybe missed? Was it similar to what we sing here? Not a bit. Did you sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God? Oh, gee. <laughs> How are they going to know they're Lutheran if they don't learn that? <laughs> uh, so it was what we would probably call praise music. Was there a guitar and all that stuff? Yeah. Did you like it? Did they have any CDs that we could listen to sometime? Great. That's nice. That's wonderful. Um, you know, older folks generally like the older hymns and the songs we grew up with. It does grieve my heart when you ask young people what's your favorite hymn, they almost never have an answer. And the problem is that the songs we sing aren't real singable through the week. You know, you don't leave church thinking through the melody or the words. and. Uh, I grew up, like I said, I didn't grow up Lutheran. I went to camp a lot. I really rely on a lot of choruses and songs I learned growing up to maintain my faith. So that's just something to think about. Any people uh, want to share a joy or a concern this morning to include in our prayers? Anything happening in anybody's lives? Yes. Is she in the villa at Phoebe Burke's? Or, oh, the villa, okay. Okay, and what's her name? Mabel. Wonderful, anything else? Any other people have anything good happening this week? Come on, y'all had enough to eat so we can. <laughs> All right, well. Oh, yes. You don't have to stand up. I want to thank the Lord for giving me a wonderful friend sitting here by my side, sharing her cause. She has given me many joys that other people in my situation don't. Thank you. And what is your name? Sharon, and what is your name? What's your first name? So that's something we, we, I didn't think about, but definitely feeds our souls is good friendship, right? 
Good friendship feeds our soul. Okay, I think we prayed for her the last time I was here. So thank you for that. Anybody else? George is in good company, not one to speak out in church. <laughs> Anyone else? That was a wonderful thought. Uh, thank you, Mary. Well, let's have a prayer now. Gracious God, our hearts overflow with thankfulness. We are so comfortable. We are so well fed, well sheltered. We have so much security. Sometimes we forget um, that most people actually in the world are not so well off. And yet we continue to have a hunger and a longing. And you teach us that you alone can satisfy that hunger. So may we continue to look to you and feed on you as our lives go by and we anticipate our life eternal in your kingdom. We pray for our children as they go back to school for their safety and their open minds, for their teachers and all those who deal in the realm of education that they will have the patience and the wisdom and the joy in helping our young people along the path of maturity. We thank you for uh, the recovery of Mabel that enables her to be back in her home at the villa. We want to lift up the joy of friendship. In fact, you have called those who follow you friends. And you have given us the ability to form close relationships and supportive relationships. And it means so much as we travel through life. If we feel we're without a friend, may we leave today seeking out someone that we can befriend and offer help and encouragement through their life. For we know that this brings us great satisfaction and joy is in itself a spiritual gift. We thank you for our musicians today who put so much uh, into creating this alternative kind of service. And we pray for especially uh, younger people that have a gift of music, that they might feel a calling to support the music ministry of this church. And now, Lord, uh, we look forward to that meal that you've prepared for us that will, in fact, feed our souls, our minds, our spirits, our feelings, and our heart. We pray these things in the name, the holy name of God and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. And you may be seated. And I invite those communing in the pew or those communing with us over Facebook Live and YouTube to commune at this time.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As, as you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. I have two great big jade plants, and I could do a little cutting for everybody here, I think. Uh, but this morning I have uh, maybe seven with me. So if anyone else would like a little cutting of a jade plant, they're really wonderful plants to, to grow and have in your home. So. And now may the blessing of our Lord, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. <coughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs>